This is the incredible true story of two gold medals, nine Nobel Prize winners, and an atom bomb. Researching the content for this video was a little bit like a good Simpsons episode, where from what you see at the start, you think it's going in a pretty obvious, predictable direction. And then it just ends up going on a totally unexpected tangent. So I was originally going to make a video about how Dutch physicists, along with the Rockefeller Foundation, worked together in order to help Europe's greatest minds escape from Nazi countries before the war. But then I stumbled across numerous stories about how some of the greatest minds in history stuck it to the Nazis in their own individual and special ways. And be before I get to the, the main story of this video, I'll tell four very short, just very interesting historical side notes that I just cannot believe is not more common knowledge. So, the, the first out of the four interesting little side notes that I'll talk about is science legend Albert Einstein. Obviously, before the war, uh, Albert Einstein was living in Germany. So, after learning about the concept of an atom bomb, and the fact that the Germans were about to attempt to make their own atom bomb, he very quickly fled to England and then he told the United States about this German project. And so then this led to the United States developing their own atom bomb project, which we all know today to be the Manhattan Project. And although this project was started upon Einstein's tip-off, he himself was actually forbidden from actually working on that project himself. And you would assume that it was because he had German origins, but no, that had nothing to do with it. And in fact, there were other Germans who were actually working on the Manhattan Project. But it was because of his political beliefs. So, Einstein was a democratic socialist, and because of that, he was forbidden uh, for working on the Manhattan Project. So, that's one pretty interesting historical footnote right there. And here is another one. 1918 Nobel Prize winning physicist Max Carl Ludwig Planck thought that he could actually reason with Hitler and convince him not to be such a horrible person. But upon failing to reason with Hitler, Planck's son tried and failed to actually assassinate Hitler. The third interesting footnote that I'd like to talk about is a physicist by the name of Max Born. Now he was a Jew from Poland, which was obviously not going to play out too well for him if he chose to stay in Poland. So he escaped to the United States. And whilst he was in the United States, he became a teacher. And he himself won a Nobel Prize in 1954 and he ended up teaching nine future Nobel Prize winners. And interesting little side note, his granddaughter was Olivia Newton-John from the Grease movie. And now for the fourth little footnote before I get to the main story of this video, I'll talk about 1932 Nobel Prize winner uh, Werner Heisenberg. Now, he actually did work for the Nazi side, but it is actually a hotly debated topic if he actually purposely hindered the Nazi's atomic bomb development. So later after the war, Allied intelligence found out that he easily had the knowledge to actually successfully make his own version of an atom bomb, but yet he didn't. And this is further backed up by what was recorded from an Allied intelligence listening device when there was a conversation between a couple of physicists after the Hiroshima bombings, and Heisenberg was overheard by his listening device by saying that he secretly was not hoping for a German victory. But despite having these views, whether he purposely hindered the Nazis' atomic bomb development, that is actually still a very hotly debated topic and there are very strong arguments on both sides of this debate and to, it, it'll probably end up being like the JFK assassination in the sense that we'll never truly know. But with these four interesting footnotes out of the way, I'll now get to the main topic or the main story of this video. So this all started in 1933 and there was a man by the name of Erwin Schrodinger, yes the Schrodinger's cat guy, was coming back to Germany after just winning his own Nobel Prize. And upon arriving home he saw a friend from his community being beaten up by Nazi goons and Schrodinger being a good Samaritan attempted to step in and help his Jewish neighbour but the Nazi goons responded by beating him up instead. And so obviously Schrodinger was not too happy about this and so he vented to all of his friends, and one of the friends that he vented to was a Dutch physicist by the name of Niels Bohr. And just to keep the story consistent with Nobel Prizes, he was a 1922 Nobel Prize winner. So Bohr listened to Schrodinger's story, and they could both basically see that the Nazis were going to evolve to become a much bigger problem for the world than what they were at the time. And as we all know, they turned out to be right. And so with Bohr making this prediction, he actually got in touch with some pretty powerful American friends that he had, and one of which was the head of the Rockefeller Foundation. And they arranged and financed for Central Europe's greatest minds to get away from Nazi-controlled countries. And this is for a bit of a two-pronged reason that one, yeah, you'll be draining future Nazi war machine of the greatest minds, 
And furthermore, you'll be also adding that benefit to the Allies' side for the future war to come. So the Rockefeller Foundation and Niels Bohr, they referred to these people as academic refugees. And they ended up saving 303 academics along with their families. So whilst Bohr's was writing and contacting to all his fellow academics who were residing in Nazi-controlled countries, he eventually came across two German Nobel Prize winning physicists by the name of Max von Lau and also a Jewish physicist by the name of James Franks and he was a 1922 Nobel Prize winner as well and they too had very serious concerns about the Nazi movement and one of their immediate concerns was that they were worried that the Nobel Prizes which are made out of pure gold will be confiscated by the Nazis and used to finance that war machine and so they arranged for both of the Nobel medals to be sent to Bohr in Denmark. And also, bear in mind, this is highly illegal as well as the private transportation of golden Nazi-controlled countries at the time is a capital offense, meaning that. And after sending these gold medals away, Max von Lowe chose to stay in Germany so he could be a very loud vocal voice against Nazism. However, with James Franks, he himself was actually Jewish. And so he didn't really have much of a choice. He had to get out of there. And so he ended up escaping to the United States and he actually repaid the United States for the hospitality by joining the team that worked on the Manhattan Project. Anyway, skip forward to 1940 and it turns out that Copenhagen was not such a safe place to leave the medals after all when in April the Nazis invaded. And this presented a very big problem for Bohr. So hypothetically, if the Nazis had found those two gold medals in Bohr's lab, it would lead to the execution of Max von Lau, as that would implicate him for sending those gold medals away from Germany, and it would also implicate Niels Bohr for accepting those medals. And also, because James Frank's name was written on one of the medals, it would also implicate both of them for being Jewish sympathizers. And so it, it was really life or death consequences here. So, and Bohr was in a, an incredibly stressful situation, as he didn't really have too many options open to him. I mean, they couldn't really hide them because the Nazi goon squads had become very good at searching places for hidden materials because that's what they specialized in, it's what they did when they ransacked places. And although he did have the option where he could just discard the medals on the street or throw them away, that would save himself, but it wouldn't save his friend Max von Lau. And so Bors was stressing out, and for a very good reason. But fortunately, he had a lab assistant by the name of George de Hevesy, and he had a solution, as in, literally a solution which was three parts hydrochloric acid one part citric acid so as the nazis could be heard ransacking the neighbors up the street george de Hevesy grabbed the two gold medals from niels bohr and threw them both into a beaker and then he poured in his special chemical cocktail solution and then knock 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 a nazi goon squad had arrived and they started the process of checking everyone's ids and then searching the lab for prohibited items and niels and george watched in very tight anticipation as the nazi goons approached the beaker where they left the gold medals with the chemical solution but fortunately by the time that the nazi guard had made it to the beaker it just appeared to be this orange liquid and to anyone who's not a whiz in chemistry there'd be no indicator at all that those beakers once contained actual gold. So the plan had worked. They could breathe a huge sigh of relief. So anyway, after the Nazis left the lab and are satisfied that there was nothing prohibited there, they went along and started ransacking the other neighbors down the street. And George and Niels decided not to test their luck. So they just left that orange solution in a beaker and decided just to leave it on a shelf and basically just temporarily forget about it. And anyway, a couple of years go by, it's now 1943 and Bors received a tip off that the Nazi goon squads were about to arrest him because they found out that he was a Jewish sympathizer and that they were also going to arrest George de Hevesy because they found out that he himself was actually Jewish and so they both escaped to Sweden and whilst there was an exile in Sweden George de Hevesy won his very own Nobel Prize I mean, I kind of have a character in this story who's not a Nobel Prize winner, right? And as far as these two characters in the story, uh, that's where they spent the rest of the time for the war. So anyway, the years roll by, the Nazis are defeated, the Allies have won, everyone's happy, and Niels and George could finally return back to the lab. And with all the movements and all the things going on, it took them just under 10 years to get back to the lab from when they turned the gold medals into this orange solution. And so when they returned to the lab, they were amazed to find that that beaker with the orange liquid was still there. How incredible is that? I'm just amazed that someone just didn't tip that out when they were just trying to clean the lab or just try to do a bit of housekeeping, just having no idea what it is. I mean, so anyway, with this stroke of incredible good luck, De Hevesy applied some of his chemistry magic and he got the orange liquid back into a solid gold form. And then he sent these two clumps of solid gold to Sweden or Stockholm specifically, 
where they recast the medals and then reissued the Nobel Prizes to the original recipients being James Franks and Max von Laue. Just how incredible is the story that you've got this group of in incredibly intelligent people and arguably the greatest minds in our planet's history and that they one, looked out for each other and two, that they s stuck into the Nazis in their own individual special ways. So anyway, now you know the story of two gold medals, nine Nobel Prize winners and an atomic bomb.